Hello, saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. Now for our story. Although Dr. Martin Larrabee was in his early 30s, he looked younger. He had, in fact, a disarmingly boyish quality. This, fortunately, was no disadvantage to him in his position as resident psychiatrist at the Huntsville Sanitarium. For Martin Larrabee had the gift of arousing confidence, of evoking in people a desire to tell them their problems, their hopes and fears. And this was no accident. It was due to his training and to the fact that he genuinely liked people. He was interested in them and wanted to help them. And that was why he'd chosen to be a psychiatrist, a doctor for the mentally ill. Yes, Dr. Larrabee was interested in healing people with disorders of the mind. And today, as he waited for his most recent patient, Kit Calvert, to be admitted to his interviewing room, he was thinking about her case. He'd seen the young woman only once, the day after she entered the hospital. Well, now there is a quiet knock at the door. Dr. Larrabee crosses to open it. Miss Calvert is there with a nurse who nods to the doctor and disappears. With the manner of a polite host welcoming a distinguished guest, Dr. Larrabee ushers Kit to an easy chair. As he sits in another chair opposite her. Well, Doctor, here we are again for another cozy little chat. Well, I hope you mean that, Miss Calvert. Mean it? No, Doctor, I'm afraid I spoke in irony. Oh, I'm sorry. I always hope that my patients may find our interviews pleasant. Or at least not actually unpleasant. Oh, I'm not really complaining. So far, it's been neither one nor the other. I'm even rather curious about this whole thing. But I am a little disappointed. Disappointed? Yes. I always thought you psychiatrists had your patients lie down on the couch, close their eyes, and just start saying anything that came into their head. Instead, you sit me down as if you were about to have tea. <laughs> in other words, I'm hardly the popular conception of a psychiatrist you had in mind, huh? That's right. And you haven't even an accent. <laughs> that sounds rather like an accusation. Well, the reason I have no accent, Miss Calvert, is simply that well, I was born and raised right here in this state. I'm plain American. In fact, except that I'm somewhat older than you, we might even have gone to school at the same time. Oh, dear me, I should think you'd find that a disadvantage. No, on the contrary. It helps me to understand another person with a more or less similar background all the better. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Yes. An admirable quality. If well founded. Well, aren't you going to ask me if I ever had an impulse to beat my nurse over the head with my shoe? No. Well, why not? Because, Miss Calvert, I, I'm quite sure if you'd wanted to, you would have. And very likely did. Oh. And supposing I did, is that a revealing fact? Yes, indeed. Well, I'd like to know what it reveals. Well, as an isolated fact, it might mean any number of things. In connection with other facts concerning your background, your environment, and your reaction to it, it could be a valuable clue. Clue to what, may I ask? Miss Calvert, you were brought here by your uncle yesterday. You'd been quite ill. You told me then that you were completely recovered, and it was absurd for you to be here at all. That's perfectly true. Well, now, the fact is, we in this hospital haven't the least desire to detain a patient who has no need of us. You see... Well, there are so many people who have a genuine need to be helped. To be foolish for us to waste our time. I think you'll acknowledge the justice of that. Miss Clay. I've been thinking about your case since I saw you yesterday. And I've come to the conclusion that you may be correct. Is that so? Yes, yes, indeed. So I have a suggestion to make. I hope it'll be satisfactory to you. Well, what is it? If you would like to return to your father's home... No, no, I won't do that. You mean you'd 
rather remain here with us? Yes. Yes, anything. I'll do whatever you say, but I won't go back to Dad. And yet, you, you've given me the impression that you resented very much being asked to remain here. Well, maybe I did say something like that. It, it was silly of me. I, I like it here. I, it's peaceful. And... No, I won't go back. But isn't that rather strange? Here you are, by your own admission, perfectly well, in no need of help. And yet you prefer to remain here, rather than return to your father's comfortable home. Well, maybe it does sound queer. I, I can't help it, but I won't go back to Dad's. I'd rather die. I, I'm afraid of him. Afraid of your father? But why? Surely you don't believe he might harm you. Well, that depends upon what you mean by harm. He's harmed me already. I wouldn't even put it past him to hurt me physically. You realize, Miss Talbot, that's a serious job. Oh, I don't care if it is. It's true. Dad wouldn't stop at anything. He hates me. Your father hates you? Yes, he does. I'm sure of it. He always has. That's why he sent him away. Because he wanted me to stop it. Whom did your father send away, Miss Talbot? I... I don't know. I don't remember. Try to remember. Oh, I have tried. I've tried until my head aches. If I could only see his face, but... But I can't. It's blurred. It begins to form, and then it, it's as if a shadow crossed, blotting out the features. Only the voice. I remember the voice. Is the voice familiar? Someone you know? Someone you knew once? I, I don't know that either. I hear it in my mind from far away as if... As if it was coming through a, a wall or... Or from a dark place. But I don't know whose it was. I can't. Oh, let me go back to my room. I can't talk anymore. I don't want to talk about it. Let me go, please. Of course, Miss Count. Suppose you go back to your room and rest a while. You're sleepy, aren't you? A little nap? Yes. Yes, that's it. I'm sleepy. Oh, Miss Janeway, Miss Calvin would like to return to her room. Yes, Doctor. And ask Barbara to come in, will you please? Ask her to bring her book. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long, Dr. Larrabee. I had to finish a report for Dr. Crandall. Uh, that's, that's all right, Barbara. I uh, just saw that new patient, Mr. Talbot, in the hall. She's an awfully good-looking girl, isn't she? Yes, uh, yes, she is. Uh, you set up a file on her, of course. Oh, yes, Doctor. As soon as she came in yesterday. Uh, by the way, did you see that report from Dr. Nielsen? It came in this morning from Miami. Yes, thanks. You can put it back in her file when you go. It, uh, it's on my desk. Well, I want to dictate a few notes on this cabinet right now. Just uh, just type them up with one carbon. We'll do a formal report later. Yes, Doctor. Uh, let's see. Second interview. Your date. Miss K.C. Patient continued to affect a cynical attitude and expressed skepticism as to value of treatment method. She commented disparagingly concerning physician's qualifications. Patient insisted defensively she was not ill nor in need of assistance. In accordance with plan mentioned in yesterday's notes, it was suggested to her that she might possibly be released to her father. As expected, she then became very much overwrought, repeating that she would not return to her father's home, that he hated her and that she would, quote, rather die, close quote. While in state of fear and excitation concerning father, patient referred to someone she cannot remember, someone she has apparently identified on childhood planes. We must try to discover this person's identity in patient's mind. Or oh, take that, will you, Barbara? I'm not here unless it's important. Okay. Dr. Lara, this is office. He's calling for you. Who? Uh, yes, just a moment. I'll see if he can talk to you. Dr. Larrabee. What on earth is the matter with you, Barbara? You look as if it's bad news. Who's calling? Maybe it is bad news, Dr. Larrabee. It's Mr. Craig. Craig, who's he? It's Larry Craig. You know, he's the district attorney. The DA? What would he do on it with me? <laughs> Don't look so frightened, Barbara. I haven't committed a crime. It's probably a mistake. No, Dr. Larrabee, you haven't committed a crime, but your patient, Kit Calvert, has. He's committed the crime of perjury. And if Gerald Craig, the district attorney, has anything to say about it, he'll have to pay the punishment for that crime. You may be in for a lot of difficulty, Dr. Larrabee. 
You know how important it is for Kit Calvert to be free from threats and tensions beyond those you yourself are able to control in the course of treatment. But this is one threat you may not be able to control, one which may mean a threat to Kit's mental health for the rest of her life. 